On today's episode, we confirm that gravity still works. I cut a perfectly good boat in half. And we determine if it has good acoustics. I am so excited. It's starting to look kind of like a boat. So there's the, the bottom side view. Everything lined up from, oops, get my finger in the way. Everything lined up here from left to right, top to bottom. Looks pretty darn good. Now comes the easy part, hard part. Not sure what the next step is. So if we're following along in the recipe, we are now at station, or station, we are now at step 18. I'm calling them stations because that's what I'm reading at the top of the picture here. We just did that. We just checked everything and it's all in alignment where we want it to be and stapled in. Um, so what he's saying here is, you know, you basically, you're going to start gluing the next piece on. Um, and... I just realized already, because I just put these pieces on, these were going to be dark, and now they're not. So we're going to change that pattern I came up with already a little bit. What I'll do is uh, I'll do two dark ones to start the next piece, and this next piece here will be dark, so we'll do the stripe that way. And that's fine. Not a problem. Just a little change of design. Um, so on the instructions, he's showing to put that next piece on here and staple it. You know, put the glue in there. Glue in the ridge, put it on, staple it in place. I don't like to do that because then I've got all these staple holes everywhere to worry about. And I've already got a couple, you know, just based on getting all this set up. And that's why I came up with these, um, these little dudes, you know, because what we're going to do, and I saw this on another video, the, the guy building uh, Orca boats was, was doing this. Um, just put this on and clamped it, and that's what held it. You know, you clamp it for a half hour, that glue is set enough where you can move on. So it'll take me a half hour to do each side anyway. So we'll see how that goes anyway, see what happens. Okay, so at this point I've got uh, two strips on each side. So I got the, the one on the first side, just finished putting this one on. I've got the clamps with those little uh, C-shaped pieces of wood holding those in place. Those are kind of cool because as you put them on, you can you can twist a little bit and, and uh, straighten out the straps a little bit or the, or the uh, slats a little bit if you need to. You know, they might come on a little bit this way or this way as they're twisting through, and you can you can kind of push them back where they go and then put that clamp on. But you'll notice in between each of the clamps, in a few spots, you'll notice it's spreading out just a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting some tape on, give it a good squeeze. Tape it down, doing that on the inside or the, the middle of each one of these, um, just to make sure. May not be needed, but you can see as I'm doing this a little bit, you probably can't see in there, but just squeeze out a little bit more glue at that point. So you want to do that all the way down. You also kind of get an idea, why do you need so many darn clamps? That's a lot of clamps, but uh, you're going to use them all. I've got eight or nine left up on the board there that I'll probably use as we go. Um, but this gives you enough to do both sides at once. You know, give it 30 minutes to set on one side, work on the other, back and forth. You can theoretically keep going on this for several hours this way, so. So I'm to a point now. I've got one, two, three, four, five pieces on each side here, uh, all taped up and glued up. It's ended up taking me probably 15 to 30 minutes on each one of these to get them all set up and, and, and you know, taped in, clamped in, and everything. Um, but it goes pretty fast, it's, it's not too bad. So I, you know, I do one side, flip over, do the other side. Um, I figured out each piece is approximately 0.8 square feet. So, you know, you kind of make progress as you go. It's looking pretty good. Um, so at this point, I have 20 hours of work into this thing. So I'm gonna keep track, and at the end, I'll show you kind of where I go. But um, give you updates as we go along too, but, um, 
I don't know, it didn't seem like 20 hours, it seemed more like six or seven, so I guess I'm having fun. Just thought I'd give you a detail of what the ends are shaping up to be. Um, so I'm just, uh, you know, rough cutting these and letting them hang off a little bit off the end. Um, can I get your perspective where we are here on the end of the boat here? Um, so we've got this inside stem. Remember we put that on with these screws. Um, I use really small screws here that are number six. So they tucked in there really well. But I've been, um, as, we, as we progress here, I've been shaping this because as you see, you know, when you come from here down, you're coming into a point and you wanna have something to, to glue to right here. You gotta have a good mating surface. So uh, I've been using, I've got three different tools here I've been using. I use a little number four block plane here to, to get it started. Spoke shape to get it a little closer yet. And then for just fine tuning, I've got a nice sharp chisel. And if you need to, um, you know, you can pull these screws out. Um, I use really tiny ones, so I didn't have to. So they're still in there. Um, they will get pulled out eventually here before the, before the um, outside stem gets put on. But right now that's just holding everything nicely. The other thing I've uh, learned as I went here too is as you're putting um, glue in these joints, you wanna have this other piece, you know, sitting up here ready to go. And obviously on a round boat, it just wants to slide off there. So just put a clamp upside down at this end and another one at the other end. And that just kind of holds it there for you, keeps it nice. Um, the other thing I did right here too is uh, some of these pieces are not as long as I want them to be. So I had to do a scarf joint. So this one's curing right now. Um, it's really hard to see that with this focus. It doesn't want to focus on it. But there is a 45 degree bevel right there and those two pieces are glued together. I'm just gonna let them sit for an hour or so. And that should take care of it. I just needed that extra foot to get to the other end here. But you'll need to do that a few spots. It won't show up in the final product because um, the, you know, the wood is so, Nicely color matched, you just won't see it. It'll blend right in. So you know on the directions, you know, they always say read all of the directions before you start something. You should do that. Here's the reason why. I read ahead a little bit um, on what the next step is, you know, after we get this uh, uh, filled in, all the rest of the strips put on here. And we're gonna take this and flip it over and then build the other side, obviously, right? Well, before you do that, you take all the staples out, anything you, you know, you've attached to these forms, you take those out so you can sand it, smooth it, fiberglass it. Then you flip it over. Well, these form pieces, these stations as I call them, will have really nothing to hold to the boat, basically, because we put this tape on here to keep it from sticking. They kind of fall out and are, are loose, right? So, um, in the directions, it says, you know, you'll have a little bit of squeeze out from the glue here and there that'll hold those on there. If not, you can always put some hot melt, you know, in that joint and that would secure it. Well, the hot melt doesn't stick to this stuff either, this tape at all. Um, I mean, it sticks a little bit, but not enough. I would worry about it. So I am in the process of just taking this tape back off here again. Um, and we'll just let that uh, stick on these last couple little bits. And I'll probably put a little hot melt in there just to feel a little bit better about it to make it work. But, you know, live and learn. That's how things go sometimes. Okay, so I'm making some pretty good progress here, I think. Um, you know, we're getting the strips done. Um, I haven't really shown you how to do like one whole strip, how long it takes, that sort of thing so far. I've already got the, uh, the tape and the, the clamps stripped off this side, but I'll show you how, how it goes on. It's been taking um, about 15 minutes um, to do each side. So basically, um, it, it's, it's kind of a pain. You, you kind of see why uh, when, you, when you see the professionals doing this, they're always doing more than one boat at a time. Because um, you got 15 minutes one side, 15 minutes on the other. The glue has to set for 30 minutes before you can disturb it and do anything with it. So you really have to um, have something else to do in the meantime. For me, it's fine. Um, 
doing real estate, I can just run in the house and, and work for a half hour, do a few things, and then come back out. So, you know, it helps um, that way, but, you know, for a lot of jobs, that wouldn't work out. So what I'm doing is just running the glue along here, just a real small bead all the way down to the end, just putting it in that groove. And I've got my piece on top here ready to go. And all you do is start it in that groove at this end, and throw a clamp on it. And you have time, um, you know, you've got a few minutes to work on this, but um, it, you, know, you don't want to be real slow with it, but you've got some time to make some adjustments as needed, make sure everything's tight. These little end pieces are a little fussy because they don't want to stay down sometimes. So I've been actually putting a, a vertical clamp on these two. As we're getting on this portion of the boat, it's starting to um, really flex everything. Yeah. You know, as you're coming through, the, the wood's not only turning this way, but it's turning this way at the same time, so you're really twisting it. You can kind of see that right here as we start. So you'll go back and, and adjust a few times here as we go. I'm not even sure I can get a clamp on this one right here. I probably can't. So I'm gonna move up to the next one here. See if I can twist this one to go in. tape here because the tape has been my best friend through this whole thing. I found it helps to get actually get this tape on first. So I put it on there, try to go work a little bit ahead, push this into its groove, push down and seal that tape on there. Same here, push down, put the tape on. After that, I'll come back and put the clamps on, and you'll see how we kind of push that. But you can see how I'm having to twist that to tighten this down on here. And then that's where those clamps come into play, is they'll hold it down against that. Um, again, in the directions, you know, Joe wants you to use staples on all of these, and I can see why that's a good thing. And my clamp just fell off the other end. So we'll get that in a second. No, so I can see how that's a good thing to do, but I also don't like all the little holes it makes. Okay, so you should get to about a point about halfway down here, and then I just start putting the clamps on. All I'm doing is taking this and pushing it against that form to hold it down. Because it just it wants to spring back every time. It's just help hold it in there.
might get some spots that just don't want to bend um, the right direction. So what I've done is I've put a couple clamps here just on this framework. And I'm just heating this up with a heat gun. Got tape putting pressure on it here, just holding it in position. So I'm going to heat it up, make sure I don't burn it. But then uh, when that cools in that position, that should kind of lock it together. You want to overbend it just a little bit because it's going to spring back. But um, at least this will help you get it around some of those really hard to get corners. Okay, so at this point I had, uh, you know, I was, I was doing uh, both sides all the way up. Got to this point where now you can't really go anymore because they're hitting each other here. So you just start doing just the one side. So I've got this side now built up over the center line. And then I'm at the point now where I just took and uh, just ran a string line along here, put a chalk line all the way through. So from one end to the other, a nice straight line. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut that off. I'm just going to use that Japanese uh, pull saw. And I'm going to cut that nice straight line all the way through there. And then I'll be able to fill in this other side. That's where it gets a little cumbersome because you're building each one of those little pieces has to fit as a wedge, has to fit into this other piece. So you've got a, a taper at both ends. A um, little difficult to do. It's going to slow things down a little bit, but it's starting to look cool. Make sure too that you're, you're keeping this really perpendicular here. That'll help that other piece made in there really nicely. square edge, put it up against where the last two pieces come together. Turn me a little bit here. Right where those come together right there. I put a mark there. That's where the end of the board's going to be. Then I put another mark on it right where it intersects this piece here. Okay. Draw a line on it. And then I just hold it right on here and just plane it down. Right down to that line. Get a little bit shy of the line, get close, but not all the way. And what you'll do, kind of take it and put it in this groove here, and we're just going to slide it forward until it hits. So what you do is, if you see a little spot right there where it needs it, just take and just shave off a little bit more there. I've been using the chisel on that part, but uh, once you glue that, that, just that pressure right there will lock that in, and that's nice and tight and smooth. And we go on to the next one. You will notice here, I have switched over to staples in this section. Remember I said I didn't want staples, I didn't want holes? Well, they don't make very big holes, I found, but they're also speeding up this process like crazy. Um, and really, I can't even get one of those clamps in here. They just don't fit. So that's really my only option on some of these. Um, but it's speeding it up because I can actually, I put this one in 10 minutes ago, fit this one, I can put this one in, 10 minutes later, do the next one. Um, I'm not waiting for that glue to set every time for like, you know, some of these had some stress on them. They were having to sit for almost 24 hours to cure up. So this is really gonna speed things up. I, I see why the guys do this when, the, when they do it professionally.
we're getting down to the last few strips here on the hull. And when you get to this point, um, things are getting pretty tight. Um, I'm gonna be able to get one more strip in there, it looks like, that will, uh, you know, I'll be able to put in just like I've been putting in those other pieces. It will just barely fit in there. Um, and, and be able to like, you know, spring up enough to flex that to get the ends in to those grooves. After that, I've got two more pieces to come in and it's really going to be tight. Um, so what I did is I'm gluing up uh, a couple strips here together. And by putting those together ahead of time, I'll be able to cut those kind of in that half moon shape um, and shape them as one piece instead of two, trying to get those to fit in there. It's gonna be really tough. Um, the other thing you have to do on these last couple pieces is, you know, you've got the, your, um, your little groove here and you're gonna to have to cut the top of that groove out a little bit. So this next piece will actually be able, you know, that final piece will be able to drop in there because it obviously you can't capture it and then push it in. So something has to be twisted just a little bit to make that happen, so. Um, just to be aware, it's a little easier if you glue two of them together at the end there and then just fit that last piece, but making pretty good progress. It's looking pretty nice. I'm happy. Okay, here, just to give you an idea, um, you know, I had to glue those two pieces together, but I just wanted to show how tight this really is right here and how it's, uh, it's going to be necessary to do as I, um, I'm just going to balance that in there. There, so if I take and pull back on this, which is really hard to do with two of them in there, but you can get that. Kind of gives you just that little bit of gap right there. So there's no way I'd ever make like a, a little sliver piece that would fit in there. And that's that's why I'm gluing those two together is I'm just gonna need just that little edge of that second piece to, to put on there. But by having that there, I can shave this down and make this uh, fit perfectly. Um, I will also square up this edge along here with the chisel a little bit, um, just because that's where the I mean, that's where we cut it with the saw. It's a little rough, so you want to smooth that out to make that everything fit, but that's what it's going to be. That's going to be a lot of fiddling with that part. Down to the nitty gritty. So if you look up in the dictionary what nitty gritty means, they're going to show you a picture of this. Okay, so while I've been waiting for the uh, those two uh, pieces to glue up, those are going to have to set for like 24 hours to cure fully before I cut them for that little section in the middle there, that last last piece of stripping. I thought I'd work on I thought I'd work on these uh, the keel here, um, stern. Yeah. Anyway, the front. Um, and what I realized is. When I put those two pieces together, I don't know why, but this thing sprung back on me a little bit. I didn't expect that. I thought these were gonna hold on pretty well. So it was actually worse than this. It was up quite a bit. I've done about a half hour of adjustment here. Um, lots and lots of this stuff with the spoke shave, getting everything. Um, I thinned this out just a little bit so it would bend easier a couple spots. I also, you know, fine tuned this edge a little bit all the way down through here. So um, when I first did this, I could barely push this down with with standing up on it. And now I've got it down, you know, I can push it down with one hand. Still not ideal that it's doing that, but now that I've done that, um, it's a nice fit all the way through. So it should work pretty well. I like the look of it. That walnut looks really cool on there as, a, as an accent. So um, we'll get that put on at some point here. Uh, that just gets epoxy down, use a thickened epoxy so it fills up, because there's, you know, little imperfections in there, little gaps, so that thickened stuff will fix that. And this will get strapped at this end so it's nice and tight. Put a few more on as we go along through here. Once that's set, then this all gets shaped to match the shape of the boat again, you know, so you're going to more spoke shape work to get all that feathered in all the way through. But I do like how it looks. It's kind of cool. So I found out I screwed up a little bit here. It's fixable. Everything's fixable, right? It's wood. You can just cut it out and start over. Um, but this is not too bad. Um, when I put this first piece in, I bent it just about as far as I wanted to bend it without, you know, I was, I was pretty sure it was going to break if I bent it too far. 
but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to come down to the bottom of this form. Um, this is that, that triangular piece that had the holes in it that we, that we uh, glued on there um, to make the, uh, the stems. So the reason I thought of this is if I fiberglass this and then flip this whole thing over, these are going to be sticking out. So I know that had to be something wrong there. I'd have to cut those off if that was the case. So not a big deal. Um, I can just come back to this first stem, which I'm, I'm correct here. I'm right at the a point where I should be. It was just, it was supposed to, this piece was supposed to dive down farther. Not a huge deal. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to come in, I'm going to glue a couple pieces in right here, like so, okay? Glue those in. And then once they're set, I'm going to take and cut a line and arc from here down to there and just shape that in. And that'll make that front down. And it's kind of a cool accent with that darker wood right there. I kind of like it. So we're going to call that a happy accident. stem put on the front end here. Um, remember I said that was kind of sprung out so I was able to put the straps on there and, and put it down. But one more thing I did is, um, kind of see if you zoom way in here, um, I added just one more piece of, of wood here a little bit wider. Because what I found is, um, next time I do this a little different, but um, when I shaped the the inner stem to, to put the uh, put the panels on or put the, you know, the strips onto it. I didn't get that narrow enough. It probably should have been more to a point because by the time you add the, the strips on there, it was wide enough where it was about a little bit wider than this um, piece that I already had, which is about three quarters. So I just went another, um, took an inch and an eighth piece and, and added that underneath there, just one more strip. I had some um, walnut sitting around that was actually very thin anyway. We were, we're perfectly on there. So just added that in there to give me enough room to taper this thing. Cause, um, now when we go to, to shape this, you know, we want to follow this line up and we want to follow this line up. And before I didn't have enough material to do that, it would have been like a little, a little step right here. So anyway, that, uh, epoxy is curing now. One more thing kind of done. Next, we got to shape that thing too. We'll just probably use a spoke shave on that and shape it down. But I'm going to let it cure a little bit longer. It's only been on there about 10 hours so far. Okay, one more thing I wanted to talk about. You know, you're, um, when you put this all together, you know, from far away, it looks really nice. And most of the joints are. But, you know, where you're fitting these final pieces in the middle, um, everything gets really tight. It's hard because you're, you know, um, You've got a, a cove here, but then here you've got just a squared joint because you got to be able to fit that in there. So um, you're going to end up with some little gaps and things. And it's not a big deal 
they look really terrible right now. Um, a lot of them. I actually took and, and took some glue and shoved a couple of little splinters of pieces in here to, to fill some of this. But as you um, as you go along, as you go to sand this, a lot of that will disappear. You know, a lot of these little joints will just kind of tighten up and, and, and look better as you sand them. But what you can also do is just put a little dab of glue in there um, along those. And the same with all these little uh, uh, staple marks too. Put a little dab of glue on there. And then when you sand over them, that uh, sand, uh, sanding dust will, will go in there. So what you have to do is you have to turn off your, if you have a vacuum system on your sander, turn that off. And when you run that across there, all that sand, uh, all the wood fibers and everything will, will work their way back into those holes and they will just disappear. And then by the time you put the coating on here with the epoxy and everything, it just looks fantastic at that point. So you won't notice it. Um, well, you might, but no one else ever will. What you want to do here is I'm just cutting it uh, close to that stem. I don't want to really cut into it too much. It doesn't hurt if you do a little bit. It's not going to kill you, but you just want to get real close down to that. Um, and then we'll take and uh, shave it down more detailed from there. I have this all smoothed out, test fit exactly how I want it now, so that's cool. Um, put some tape on here because we're getting ready to do the epoxy next. And you want to have everything ready when you start with the epoxy because it's it's just a mess. It gets all over everything. Um, so by putting the tape here, it just helps with the cleanup. To, I'll try to wipe it off as it drips before it gets down onto the wood. It's not a huge deal if it gets down on here. We're going to sand this later anyway, and it's going to get covered with epoxy eventually. Not a huge deal. Just um, you don't want a big glob because it's just it's really tough to uh, sand that stuff once it hardens. Um, I did end up here too. Um, it's hard to see from there probably. There was a couple little voids right here where I, these, these last couple strips stopped right here. They didn't quite go out as far as I wanted them or needed them to be. So I just uh, took some super glue and actually just glued in a couple really short pieces and then just planed those down and it just filled in that little gap that I had right there. So now everything's fitting really well. Um, I was able, on this uh, end, I got a little thinner than I did on the front, so I didn't have to add that, that uh, wider piece like I added on the other side. So. This fits really nicely all the way through here. All I have to do now is mix up that uh, thickened epoxy um, and put that in there. There's a couple little gaps in here um, where it doesn't hit. It's, and it's like a 32nd of an inch. It's not a huge deal, but I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna put some wood dust in that um, uh, thickened epoxy just to give it a little more substance, a little more color. And what that will do is that will help, um, so you won't ever see sunlight through there. Because basically, if you had this like sitting on top of your car and the sun's shining, you'd be able to see through that little crack because the, the epoxy is clear. So that's, I'm just going to add some, uh, some dark on there and, and, and thicken that up with the dark wood dust. And that should help a lot. Okay, here we go for the next messy part. Okay, I've got this uh, epoxy mixed up now. I've got a bunch of thickener in it, and I just put a bunch of that um, uh, walnut wood fiber in there as well. So I've got it nice and thick. You know, it'll still, still drip a little bit if you get enough on there, but uh, with a thin coat, it shouldn't go too far. So basically, you just kind of spatula this stuff on here. Um, you want to have enough so it's going to squeeze out a little bit. Make sure you get everything coated nicely. Try not to get too many drips inside the boat here where I've got that little opening. But because this is thick, it just it fills up any of those little imperfections. Makes it um, a lot more solid when it's done. This looks nicer too.
So adding that uh, the wood fiber to it, um, that said, changes the color. Normally, because of that, that thickener is like a white powdery type stuff. It comes out really, really white colored. Otherwise, this, this is going to darken it up significantly. Like I said, it just makes it opaque so the light doesn't go through it. So that's as far as I need to go down. The rest of that's going to get cut off anyway. You know, all this part down here is going to get cut off because I don't want it to look like a Viking ship. I just don't need that. Make sure I've got every little spot on there coated. I marked with uh, blue tape the end that goes down just so I know, so I don't accidentally get it backward as, as we're going along here. But we're going to put this uh, a coating on here as well. Make sure everything's going to be stuck down nicely. Right here, if you're, um, if you're using the pump system, like I was saying, I've got those, those two pumps. That, um, one pump of the hardener equals one pump of the uh, thickener. If you're using that system, I did two pumps of each with this, and then uh, I'll probably two tablespoons or so of the, of the thickener. So one pump of the hardener, one pump of the resin about two tablespoons or so. It, it might have been even more. I just kept adding until it got to the right consistency. But that was just about the right amount here. I'm trying to keep one hand clean so I can turn the camera on and off as needed. And so I can touch the, um, the clamps and things without getting them totally messed up. So I'm gonna put this on here as close as I can to center. We're gonna have to probably adjust it a couple times. such a good uh, clamping system, but for building a bolt like this, it really works well for a lot of things. It gives you that, that third hand that you don't always have. You can always or hardly ever have, I guess. I'm putting this tape where I want the clamps to be. I'm going to put these straps on here, and I don't want them to see themselves down into the boat. So I'm put a clamp on the uh, on the bracket down here, and that'll give me a thing to hook that hook into. Just hooking it into the bottom of the sawhorse here. Gives me something to pull against. I tighten this up. I really want to get this just about as tight as I can. Make sure there's no gaps underneath. Looks good. I need to move this over a little bit because we're not quite centered right there. Okay. I'm gonna try to get this end lined up and clamp this next. centered on that other piece if I can.
this middle, I need to pull it down a little bit more. I think I'm going to use a, a stronger strap, ratchet strap. This will give me a little more pulling power. Nice thing about having the boat on wheels is you can get around and, and move things around a little bit as you go. And I've already got epoxy all over everything here. And my helper's here. And video. You believe it? She's gonna go out for a bike ride. It's like 20 degrees outside. I think she's nuts. It's nice out. You can see that's pulling down pretty tightly on there now. It's starting to move just a little bit on me. I'm going to stick a nail in there. It's going to help hold that still. There. A little hole there to fill later, but at least that's not going to slide on me any farther. And pretty much with the spring on that, that's keeping it all really nice and tight. It's really all the clamps I need because that, that pressure just comes wrapping around there like that. So now I just need to clean up these edges a little bit. The nice thing with this material being thick like this is it, you know, it still oozes out, but it's not running down the side of the boat right now. It's pretty easy to clean it up before it gets anywhere. That's why I've got that tape there. Makes that a whole lot easier. Not a big deal what this looks like at this point either because it all is going to get, you know, shaped. You're going to take and, and shape this down to, to match the hull. So, not a big deal what it looks like. You're just trying to keep it from being a real total mess. About, I would say, 90% of this up in this end will be shaved off. It's going to be completely gone. As you get down to the front, you can leave a little bit more because it's going to, it's going to shape in there nicely. There, let that set overnight, and we can start working on it, shaping it. So you probably remember that I screwed up a little bit here, right? I just showed you that recently. And I glued those new uh, couple little pieces on here. So I got one that goes all the way back to, uh, back to here, and then I got another one in the front of that. So now I'm, I'm down where I need to be at the, at the tip here. So what I've done is I just clamped a, a piece of uh, quarter inch stick on here basically, taped it where I want it to start here, it's where it's going to start that curve down, and then down here I'm just going to put a clamp on it real quick, line that up really well, like that. So that should give me a nice gentle arc, I'll use the same piece of wood and the same orientation on each piece I do here, so I've got to do the other side as well. I have a nice dark line here. You probably notice I twist my pencil as I go, I spin it. Maybe you didn't notice. 
one of those things that just drives me crazy. I used to be a draftsman way, way back when, hand drafting, and they always taught you to spin your pencil because it keeps the lead sharp. With wood, it really doesn't matter, but I still do it. Old habits. So anyway, now I've got a nice gentle line there. Pull this off. That'll tell me exactly where to cut, and that'll be a nice upsweep on the nose of the boat.